quadratics word problems. This lesson will be on projectiles. There will be three other lessons on bridges, arches, revenue, maximizing revenue, fences, and some number problems. This lesson I have four different word problems for you, so follow along and there will be something a little bit different in each one. Solomon dives off a four meter springboard. His height above the water, y in meters, is related to the horizontal distance from the end of the board, x in meters, and is given by the following equation. Okay, so you have some guy going off a meter board into the water. So obviously you can't have negative height. He's going to start on the board, he's going to go up in the air, and he's going to come down and land in the water. So that's always a good idea to make just a little sketch. It helps you just to figure out what you're talking about. What does the y-intercept mean in the context of the problem? So remember the y-intercept, this is x on this axis and y here. And in this, if we put in zero for x, we would get four. And we know he's on a four meter springboard. So that means that the, the y-intercept represents his initial height before diving because he's on a four meter board. Four meter board, there it is right there. Okay, so what does it mean in the context of the problem? So you're not gonna say it is four. You're gonna say this is his, um, his initial height. Initial height before diving. So where he was at time zero. Time zero, four meters, right? Okay, what is his horizontal distance when he enters the water? Okay, so when he enters the water, that means here. So in this case, entering the water means what are the zeros? What is the zero here? What is the x-intercept, right? So we're trying to find the intercept here. So you know that's the zero of the function. So I would try to factor this, right? That's going to give me zeros. The other way you could find zeros is to use a quadratic formula. But this one's going to be factorable. Look, you could probably guess that. Okay, so let's factor. So factor to find the zeros. To find zeros. Now you might think a little bit about the zeros. There's one here. And if this was just a function that wasn't part of a word problem, you'd also have another zero back here, right, at some negative value for x. So you can expect to get two solutions, but one will be inadmissible because it's a word problem that deals with time, and time starts at zero. Okay, so we're going to find the zeros. So first of all, we're going to factor out that negative one. Always factor out any coefficient of x squared even if it's just a negative one. So I put out the negative, x squared minus three x minus four, and I'm looking for a product of minus four and a sum of minus three. So it's always a good idea to write these out, right? They have to add up to be negative three, and so that means the larger one is negative, and minus four times one and minus four plus one fits the bill. So this gives me negative, and I have x minus 4 times x plus 1. So what are the zeros? To find the zeros, we set this equal to 0. So for x-intercepts, set y equal to 0. So that means 0 is equal to negative x minus 4 times x plus 1. And as you recall, that means that if either of these brackets is zero, the equation will be zero, right? Because zero times one or zero times minus four is always going to give me zero. So that means x is equal to, solve for this one, you get four, and solve for this one, and you get negative one. But you need to say that this one, like I said, this is inadmissible 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 negative this isn't negative time in this one in this case the x-axis was representing the distance the horizontal distance so inadmissible 
negative distance. <clears throat> he didn't go backwards. He went forwards. <clears throat> okay, what is his maximum height? So to find the maximum height, I need to find the vertex. Now, because I've already done this work, and I know the zeros are minus one and four, I can find the axis of symmetry just by using these two numbers, add them up, divide by two. In other words, I'm finding the midpoint between minus one and four. So that's one way. Okay, so um, let's write the different ways. You could do midpoint of zeros. That will give you the axis of symmetry, right? That's one way. Another way you can find the axis of symmetry, remember we did this in the last lesson, we do x equals minus b over 2a. That will also give you the axis of symmetry. Or you could complete the square, right? You could complete the square and find the, the, um, the vertex. So finding the axis of symmetry <coughs> is going to only give me this value here, right? The x value. And I will have to plug that in to find the y coordinate. So let's do um, x equals 4 plus minus 1 divided by 2. So that gives me 3 halves. Or if I used x, now you don't have to do both of these, right? Or x equals minus b over 2a. And in this case, minus b, let's just go to the original equation here. So that's going to be minus 3 over 2 times minus 1. That also gives you 3 halves. Okay, so it's, I guess it's a way you could also do just to check. So I need to find the height when x is 3 halves. So when x equals 3 halves, y equals, and so now I substitute in 3 halves everywhere I see an x, and so I'm using this equation again, okay, so minus 3 halves squared plus 3 times 3 halves plus 4, and that's going to be minus 9 quarters, and this is going to be plus 9 halves. I'm going to have to change it all to quarters anyway, because this is a quarter, this is going to be quarters, and this is going to be 16 quarters, because that goes into here four times. And so I have minus 9 quarters plus 18 quarters, I multiply top and bottom by 2, plus 16 quarters, that's 34, minus 9 is 25 over 4. 25 over 4. And that's equal to 6.25. Okay, so therefore, the maximum height, maximum height is 6.25 meters when he is, and it was 1.5, three halves, right? 1.5 meters from the board horizontally so this horizontal dif distance horizontally so going back to our little diagram here you'd see this would be three halves and this maximum height here would be 6.25 and the vertex we could say is three halves and I probably would leave both of them in fractions if I'm going to do one or the other. Okay, so that's a nice little springboard question. Uh, pretty basic. Find the zeros, find the maximum height. And of course, you always have different options. There's not only one way to find a maximum height. And again, you could have completed the square if you wanted to. Um, but you'd already done the work to find the zero, so finding the midpoint is probably the easiest one. Minus b over 2a is always an easy way, and then you still have to find that y-coordinate because that's this value, 3 halves, is not the height. Okay, number two we're going to go to now. Number two, 
and it's a fireworks question and it says the height of fireworks in meters is represented by h and time t in seconds by h equals minus 4.9 t squared plus 49 t plus 1.5 what is the maximum height and when does it occur okay i want to find the maximum height so again you could complete the square that would be kind of tricky because we've got fractions and decimals but it's still doable but easiest way to do this is going to be to find t equals minus b over 2a which is going to give me the axis of symmetry the axis of evil axis of symmetry okay it's such a handy little equation so minus b would be minus 49 over 2a. 2a is 2 times minus 4.9. And so, that's kind of nice, 49 divided by minus 4.9. So that's, you could use your calculator if you want, but I think you might be able to guess what the value is. So I'm going to do, it's a negative divided by a negative, so I'm just going to make them both positive. So 49 divided by 9.8, bingo, 5, how lovely, a lovely answer. So I get t equals 5. So that means if I did a quick sketch here of my fireworks display, the first thing I would look for is how, what was the height, what, what height are the fireworks set off from, and that would be when t is 0, times 0 is 1.5 meters. So it starts here at 1.5, and it goes up in the air. They always go really high, and it comes back down. Extend my line. And um, maximum height, this is going to be 5, 5 meters. So this is my time, and this is my height. Okay, so 5 seconds, that's where the maximum height is going to be. So I'm going to say when t equals 5, and I'm going to plug that into my equation. Minus 4.9 times 5 squared plus 49 times 5 plus 1.5. Now, if, if um, we were doing this in class, I probably would only teach you to do two problems and do two another day, but I'm just going to squish them all in in one lesson here. Okay, so I had the answer to this. You could do it on a calculator, just a matter of squaring 5 and multiplying it by this, okay? So I get 124. So therefore, you need a concluding statement. The maximum height is, now we got our units that was in meters, so don't forget to put your units in now, 124 meters at 5 seconds. Okay, this question, over what time period are the fireworks, I was debating whether or not there was a singular to fireworks, but there isn't. They are fireworks. Over what time period are the fireworks greater than 100 meters above the ground? So this point here is 5 and 124, right? So over 100 meters. So let's say 100 meters is right here doesn't matter that we're right on or not so let's let's call this 100 here so it wants to know over what time period are they above 100 meters so I need to find out this distance right I need to find out how far is it from here to here and it's not 5 5 is the axis and that's t equals 5 here Okay, so I want to know this distance. So in order to do that, I need to find these two zeros. I want to find this one and this one. And I'm going to do that simply by setting the equation, the height, oh, am I off the page? I'm going to do this by setting the height equal to 100 and solving for t. So I will know when those fireworks hit 100 meters. So set h equal to 100 and then you're going to rearrange the equation and solve for t 
It's that simple. So this happens a lot in, in word problems where they'll say, you know, maybe you threw it off a building and they'll say, what time did it go by a window that was 50 meters off the ground? So you would, you know, you find the two of them and then you just find that distance. Okay, so I'm going to set the equation equal to 100. Just like I said, I'm going to put 100 is equal to minus 4.9t squared plus 49t plus 1.5. And I'm going to set this equal to zero by bringing the 100 to the other side. So minus 4.9t squared plus 49t. So 1.5 minus 100 is minus 98.5 equals zero. So obviously we could solve for t by factoring, but geez, there's no way we can factor this, a product of these two things. So don't waste your time trying to find two numbers that multiply to whatever that would be. Just use a quadratic formula. So t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Don't forget that big long line. I always emphasize that because students forget. And now you just plug in what a, b, and c are. So Let's say a is equal to minus 4.9, b is equal to 49, and c is equal to 1.5. So I got those right off here. Whoops, I put in the wrong number for c. c is minus 98.5. Minus 98.5. I was reading it off this equation. Very bad. Okay, don't make that mistake. So b, so I have minus 49 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, lots of numbers there to work with, all over 2 times minus 4.9. Okay, so when I'm using my calculator, I like to leave this one there, and I like to solve for this, right? So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do 49 squared minus 4 times minus 4.9. Don't forget to use the negative sign, right? Not the minus. That's another mistake that happens. Times minus 98.5. So I get 470.4 and I take the square root of that. So you don't have to delete that number, you just do like second square root, um, second answer. So you're square rooting the answer, and I get 21.69 approximately. So now that I've rounded, I'm going to put approximately equal to sign there. Oops, I was off the page again on you. And divide by minus 9.8. Okay, so you're going to get two solutions here, obviously. So I get t is equal to minus 49 plus 21.69. So I add it, and I'm going to do the minus 1. So minus 49 minus 21.69 divided by minus 9.8. And if you do that, you should get 2.8, approximately 2.8 here. And this one is approximately 7.2. So back to the question, it says over what time period? So I found these two places here. This one is 2.8 and this one is 7.2. So how long is it above 100 meters? It's just the difference between these two. So therefore, over 100 meters for 7.2 minus 2.8 um, equals, what's that, 4.4, right? 4.4, and that would be seconds. I don't leave enough room. Okay. So that's just a one, you'll often see questions like that. How long is it between a certain height? And that's how you do it. 
Okay, number three. This one's a little bit easier, I think. It says a punter kicks a football. Its height, h in meters, after t seconds, let's get the question centered, is modeled by this equation here. So you might notice and wonder, why is this always minus 4.9? That's very common because if you know a little bit of calculus, um, this is a position function, and the next would be velocity, and velocity would be this times this. So minus 9.8, does that ring any bells for you? Probably learned that in physics, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Acceleration due to gravity, right? So you'll see a lot of these minus 4.9s. Okay, what was the height when the ball was kicked? Well, that means when t equals zero, what is the height, right? So I put it a zero here, a zero here. It's the y-intercept. So 1.1 meters, ta-da. When does the ball hit the ground? Again, when the ball hits the ground, we are looking for zeros. Find the zeros. Okay, so again, this is an equation that would not be easily factored and probably you wouldn't want to do that anyway, so we're going to use a quadratic formula. So that gives you another little practice with negative b plus or minus the square root. Hopefully you memorize this now. b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. You could make a song to that. I think somebody did on the internet if you look it up. Okay, so minus 22.54 is my minus the b plus or minus the square root of 22.54. I'm going to square it. And 4 times minus 4.9 times c, which is 1.1. Very nice. This is all going to be positive, so I know I'm going to get two solutions, and I should be. And I have 2 times minus 4.9. Okay, so I'm going to just jump to a little bit of simplifying here for you so we don't waste too much time. You can check your answer. This is the square root of 529.66 divided by minus 9.8. And you get your two solutions. Don't forget to write those out just in case you make a mistake somewhere. It's always nice for a teacher to see they can find your mistake. You know, if you just, that's the thing with math, right? If you just write a solution down, the teacher can't give you any part marks because they have no idea what you did. So always show all of your work. It's very important, especially in higher levels math where the, some of the calculations are really long. If you just show a final solution, okay, enough, enough lecturing to you. Okay, so this is 4.64. And again, this is a punter kicking a ball over a certain time period. What's wrong with this? This is inadmissible. And you do have to state this. I have to say, I don't know why she writes that down. It's inadmissible. Time is greater than or equal to zero. You can have zero time. That's the start. Okay, so that means the ball hits the ground. It's the ground after, we only have one solution, 4.64 seconds. And one more question, it says, find the height, the maximum height of the ball. Okay, because we have the two zeros, we can find the axis of symmetry, right? So don't try to go back and do something crazy and you know, don't try to complete the square or something, or oh, I don't know what to do. Just add these up, divide by two. So axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry, we're going to find easily by adding those x's together. It's going, we're going to call it t. Don't forget to also include equations when you're doing work. Don't just say the axis of symmetry is this. Show your work, make an equation, something equals something. That's what we call an equation. And this comes out to 2.3 seconds. And then, of course, that's not the maximum height. That's when the maximum height is going to occur. So maximum when 
t equals 2.3 is going to give me minus 4.9 times 2.3. I'm going to square it and 22.54 times 2.3 plus 1.1, all that, and you get approximately 27.02. Therefore, maximum height is approximately, depends on how many decimals your teacher asks for, but usually two is pretty good, especially in a word problem like this. Approximately 27.02 meters. Okay, so we're down to the last part and this is getting very long. I didn't think it would take me so long to do these. Um, this one is a little bit trickier because I think it's the wording of it more than anything. It says the parabolic flight of an aircraft used to simulate weightlessness can be modeled by h equals minus 10 t squared uh, where h is the altitude in meters and t is the time in seconds since weightlessness was achieved. Find the maximum altitude reached by the aircraft and how long it takes. Okay, how long does it take to reach the maximum altitude? So again, you have weightlessness is achieved after 9,750 meters. Okay, so this is going to go up in the air like this, and it's going to come back down. So we're trying to find this maximum right here, and we're going to do that by using t equals minus b over 2a. So minus b is going to be minus 300 over 2a, that's 2 times 100, 2 times 10, sorry, and it should have been negative. So that's minus 300 divided by minus 20 that's going to give you get rid of the 10 and you get 15 so this is 15 seconds this is time t here and this is the height so when t equals 15 I just plug that right into the equation and find the height remember this is an equation that is representing the height at some given time t I just plug in all my 15s where I have X's. And that's 225 times minus 10 is minus 2250. And 15, this is the easy one to do in your head. 4500 plus 9750. And then you might want to get out a calculator just to do the end of this because it's kind of big numbers. And you get 12. Thousand. Okay, so maximum altitude, answer the question. What is the maximum altitude? Maximum altitude is 12,000 meters at 15 seconds. Bravo. Okay, what is the altitude of the aircraft when weightlessness is first achieved? So it tells you that weightlessness, this is an equation that describes the weightlessness, right? It describes the weightlessness of the flight. So at time zero, that's when you're weightless. So 9750. That was kind of maybe not quite so obvious. 9750 meters. Okay, how many seconds does the simulation of weightlessness last? if weightlessness is lost at the same altitude that it is achieved. Okay, so we know it's achieved, let's get the diagram on here, it's achieved here, so we're trying to find this other point here so that we can find this time, right? This is the one we want to know. This is time zero, so as long as I know this one, this is how long you're weightless in this simulation. So I want to set this equation equal to 9750. So if I set it equal to 9750, I should get one answer of zero and one answer of some time. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to set H equal to 9750. So here we go, 9750 equals minus 10T squared 
plus 300t plus 9750. Okay, I'm bringing this to the other side. That means I'm going to subtract it. These are both going to be gone. And I would get minus 10t squared plus 300t is equal to zero. Well, this is pretty nice. This is an easy factoring question, a common factor of minus 10t. And I'm left with t minus 30 equals zero. So what are my two zeros? This one, don't forget, people miss, forget about this one here. This is one and this is one, All right? So um, t is equal to zero. And what makes this zero? t minus 30 equals zero, t equals 30 t equals 30. So because we know the other one was 0, this one's going to be 30. And we can say, therefore, um, weightlessness, weightlessness, that's fun to say and not so much fun to write. Weightlessness lasts 30 seconds. That would be fun, don't you think? I'd love to do that. Okay, so remember, um, you might be saying, well, this is 15, this is 30. So remember that this parabola, if it was just a function and not a word problem, it would have another zero over here that is negative. So this is not the middle. I mean, this is the middle of the problem, but it's not the middle of the function itself, right? Okay, so it just means, I, I, what I'm trying to say is that from here to here is 15 and here to here is 30. And you might say, why isn't it 30 out here? Um, maybe you didn't think that, but that's because there's this little space on both sides here. Okay, so that's your um, projectile questions. What goes up must come down. They did all come down and hopefully it's um, a success for you now that you completely understand these. See you in the next lesson. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends, and have a good day. Bye.